Okay, so I want to talk about some guy. You've probably never heard of him. He's just an illustrator named N.C. Wyeth. I mean, maybe you haven't heard of him. I don't know. He died in like the 40s, so it was like a long time ago. It's okay if you don't know him. But he's like one of the greatest, most successful, and influential American illustrators. His works for publications like Treasure Island, King Arthur, and Robertson Crusoe not only became synonymous with the books themselves, but the general concepts that the books were about. Like, okay, take Howard Pyle. He was Wyatt's teacher and mentor, and he's like the grandfather of American illustration. And he's well known for basically creating the visual aesthetic of pirates as we know it today, making it synonymous with pirates in the American consciousness for, well, all of time. Well, N.C. Wyeth, he ended up going even further. Cowboys, Indians, Robin Hood, Arthurian knights. Wyeth essentially set the prototype for these archetypes through his illustrations. His pieces were visually striking, imaginative, and told engaging stories all in one moment. And there's a key to these qualities in his work that some might not be aware of, something that I feel is the most important aspect of his work, and that's his mastery of composition. Wyeth himself recalled his first lecture from Howard Pyle about composition, and Pyle basically blew his mind with it, changed Wyeth's whole perspective. Wyeth took it to heart, and he eventually became a true master of using composition to convey story, character, and mood. And I'm going to talk about a couple pieces to show how. So, in this illustration from the 1911 publication of Treasure Island, we're given a scene between two characters in the climax of their battle. It's striking and tense, but still beautiful. The foreground is tinted in violent reddish hues, which Wyeth contrasts against the cool colors of the background. Speaking of the background, it's impressive how much information about the environment he conveys with so little. All we see is the ocean, some trees on rocks, and the small portion of the mast that we're closed in on. Notice how these ropes frame Jim Hawkins in a triangular shape. It marks him as the centerpiece, then opens up downward to his opponent. The angle of the wooden beams also directs the eye from top to bottom. Even Jim Hawkins' stance is triangular, placing his pistols right in the center. With their distinct highlights and the ropes pointing directly to them, the pistols are the first thing our eyes are drawn to. And they point us downward to Mr. Hands. His pose also forms sort of a triangle, and his entire form leads the eye easily down to his knife. So, the instant we lay eyes on the piece, we see the pistols, we see the boy holding them, and then we see the boy's enemy, and the threat the enemy poses. We are immediately fed the story, the conflict, and the stakes, all with the elements of composition. But the most important compositional choices in this piece are the actions of the characters, the moment Wyeth chose to illustrate. See, this is sort of a revision Wyeth did of an existing drawing, a drawing for the same story illustrating the same scene. It was by Walter Paget, and on the surface, it had much in common with Wyeth's piece. But the major difference is he takes a scene where Jim Hawkins had already shot Mr. Hands and shows instead the moment before that happens. The tension and interest increases considerably by this choice. Rather than giving a decorative answer, we are given a question that our own imaginations answer. Okay, so this piece isn't generally seen as one of Wyeth's more memorable or beautiful or imaginative pieces, but it's a subject matter Wyeth was very adept and familiar with. Wyeth had a deep love for the rural, rugged figures and aesthetics of the American West. After all, he did basically live amongst the cowherds and cattle punchers for some time, after taking his mentor's advice to jump into his paintings pretty literally. But also, this painting has so much to say about storytelling through composition. The first thing we focus on is the man, specifically his hat and hand and face. He's not exactly centered in the frame, but he feels like the center of the scene. But the horse behind him is sharing that center, and it helps draw the eye there. The two are almost battling for the spotlight, and the horse clashes with the man's face. He distracts from it. This intentional tension between these two elements not only draws the eye, but makes it feel uneasy. The chaotic juxtaposition is suggestive of the chaos the character may be feeling. Our eye, naturally lazy, then seeks something simpler to move to and looks downward at the man's belt and gun. 
He may be standing tall, but he's armed. He's cautious and ready. How is it that we even know that? It's clear that he's not just standing there for an impressive portrait. There's a purpose to it. Well, the key is how Wyeth chooses to layer all the key elements in this scene. Everything, the sun, the tree, the horse, and the man are all practically stacked on over each other. This makes a clear three-dimensional line that creates a feeling of momentum, carrying the character from the background that he has already traversed to the space beyond him that he hasn't reached, the space we can only speculate about. We get the full story. The man rode his horse through the mountains, long enough for the sun to come low. He dismounted when he became upon something, leaving his anxious horse behind, and he approaches a bend which is deliberately placed over him in the composition. This piece of rock in front of him takes up almost as much space of the painting as he does, and that makes us land our focus on it. We see who he is and where he came from, and we're left wondering where he's going. Oh, and by the way, unlike the previous piece, this isn't an adaption of a previous work or even a scene from an existing story. This scene was invented by Wyeth, and the story told is still as rich as any from a book. J.C. Wyeth's more famous and influential illustrations for various publications were never seen as true art in his own eyes. He felt that the restrictions and requirements of printed illustration prevented true creativity, and he longed to achieve recognition as a true fine artist. Later in his life, he painted real landscapes he loved and portraits of people he is fascinated by, and while these pieces were of course magnificent, they never received the same recognition that most of his commissioned works did. The reason for that could simply be that his beautiful landscapes never required a story. Story told through the art of composition. And his ability to use that was the secret strength that pushed Wyeth's works into timelessness. It's a sad irony that Wyeth died before reaching the status he had hoped for. Because to many, he is as masterful a fine artist as ever there was.